Okay, we'll call it to order this October the 23rd, 2019 meeting of the Franklin County Commission. Roll call. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Waymeyer? Present. Chair Howard? Present. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. If you'd all stand joyously in the Pledge of Allegiance, please remain standing for the invocation that will be led by Pastor Kim Wilcox of the North Baptist Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. You know, we uh, we thank you for the changing seasons and the way uh, creation even follows you. And, and Father, what a what a beautiful season we have this year. And uh, we credit that to you. And, and Father, today we we come, we uh, lift up each one of these commissioners to you, knowing that they have an, uh, a heavy load, uh, lots of things going on, different times. And so, Father, we just ask for your your protection over them, uh, for your guidance and direction. And and Father, may they follow you in the decisions that they make and, and the, uh, the thoughts that come across and the things that need to be done. And Father, that you would just help them to be better, to be able to, uh, to serve uh, the people of Franklin County. And Father, we thank you for each one of them that you have, have placed over us and in leadership. And Father, we just uh, submit to them today and, and ask you to guide and direct their decisions. Uh, Father, we thank you for the freedoms that we have in this country. Father, they are uh, many. And uh, uh, we give you credit to that as well. Uh, so we give you praise for this day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. There's no claim vouchers or tax change orders. Oh, well, I just lost my computer. Okay, I guess we'll do it by paper. Okay. Any correspondence organizational business? Anyone sign up for public comment? Yes. Okay, a citizen who desires to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so at this time. The discussion is limited to five minutes and the commission will not take action to discuss items at this time. The discussion should be limited to matters of county commission business. <coughs> public comment is not permitted in regard to personnel matters or on pending legal matters. Items introduced under public comment may become agenda items at a later date. Joe Ferguson. Joe Ferguson, 3335 Rock Creek Road, Ottawa, Kansas, 66067. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, today I'm, David Lee is going to be asking to upgrade some road graders. And I'm mentioning this not because I object to it, because I'm a firm believer in updating equipment. But here's why I brought this up. We still have roads throughout the county where the operators are still putting two ridges on each side of the road. They're making them totally flat to where it's like a river when it rains. We still have ditches in the county that need to be cleaned out and I've seen no activity from this board or this commission um, on putting together something going forward to get the ditches cleaned out. We've got ourselves into this mess. We need to dig ourselves out. And the only way to start fixing the county roads is to get the ditches fixed so we don't keep rebuilding roads. And um, back in June, I met with Commissioner uh, Howard, met with um, Derek Brown, and I had a phone call, a two-hour phone call with uh, my commissioner, Dickerson. And I discussed two of the most important things that I thought was facing this county. One was the ditches, which I mentioned, so I don't need to keep beating that heart. And the, the second thing was the flooding issue. Now that the flooding's all went away, I hope that this commission has not forgot the issues that arrived during the flooding about sending out a massive amount of people to, with barricades and try to save lives. I offered David Lee and, and the three people that I just mentioned, I offered them a solution about putting flashing lights at both deal. And David Lee was researching it last I knew, and I talked to him this morning, he said he's still researching it. 
about, you know, like using um, KDOT uses uh, uh, solar power to, to power the energy for the flashing lights. So I just wanted to bring these issues back up. And I would ask that this commission put these on as agenda items, either on study sessions or regular meetings so that we can get something done maybe for good and take these off of our plate forever and not have to worry about these issues. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Takes us to the consent agenda. Items today that need considered and approved on the consent agenda are the commission meeting minutes for October the 16th, 2019. And that's the only item on the consent agenda. We we'll look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay. First item of business to consider and approve awarding the culvert bid for 11 12 inch by 30 inch culverts to West Wellborn Sales and seven. 15 inch by 30, excuse me, that other one was 12 inch by 30 foot, and <coughs> seven 15 inch by 30 foot, and six 24 inch by 30 foot to drainage products. David? Commissioners, <clears throat> uh, you know, we have obviously replaced a lot of culverts this year, and we need to replenish our stock. We sent uh, the bid, bid sheets to at least three different uh, uh, vendors, and we got responses from, from all three. Uh, it's our recommendation that we go with the lowest and best bid for each one of the pipe sizes. Uh, Wellburn Sales came in the lowest uh, on the 12 by 30, and drainage products uh, were the lowest on the other two uh, by just a little bit. So we would, uh, we would ask for approval to uh, make these purchases. Pretty, pretty cut and dried. These are all metal. Back to it here. <coughs> Anybody have any other questions on this? Okay, we'd look for a motion to approve awarding the culvert bids as stated. Second. Uh, approve. Second. Commissioner Waymar? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, second item, consider approving the purchase of three 2019 120-14 AWD motor graders from Foley. Commissioners, um, essentially what we've got here, um, we're asking to purchase three motor graders uh, with the exact same specs that we purchased one earlier this year. Um, the three in question, we're up on, on time. They've hit <coughs> their, uh, next month, they will hit their, the five year mark. And so per our agreement um, uh, with, with Foley, um, this is a, a trade-in to be able to get the, um, oh, the, the discounted price and whatnot that, uh, that they stipulated when we bought the machines to begin with. Um, w again, we are moving to a, um, a seven-year, 9,500-hour, um, let me get that right. 9,000. Yeah, 9,000-hour mm -hmm. uh, trade-in. Uh, rather than the five-year 7,500 hours. We feel like the, uh, the machines at the end of that, that uh, additional two-year period um, will still be viable. Uh, I don't believe we'll be losing any, um, you know, I, I, not anticipating these machines spending any more time in the shop or breakdowns or anything else. They'll still be in good condition. Um, and so... Our recommendation is to go with the, it's essentially the same deal that we had uh, earlier this year. The same machine, same specs, same cost, um, all of those parameters remain the same. Do you have any idea how many hours you have on those? 
Yes. Um, all three of the machines are going to uh, come in under this, the uh, 7,500 hour mark. But I think it's either November 19th or November 29th is when the five year time limit is. And up. the reason I ask is you're going up two years, but you're only going up another 1,500 yeah. hours. So there's a chance that we might hit hours before we hit. There's always that chance, but we have, um, uh, in the last year, we have really put an emphasis on uh, monitoring the idle hours and correcting, uh, or not correcting, but adjusting our uh, behavior um, um, that was leading to higher idle hours. And so uh, I, I think that there's a direct correlation in, in those changes that we've made internally to the fact that we're we've got three machines that uh, are going to hit the time rather than the hours and so I'm I'm confident moving forward that um, um, we'll have the same situation I'm hopeful that we'll have the same situation down at the least road. be in the ballpark yes yeah. okay. I, I feel confident that uh, we're going to be okay there these all are budgeted right they are. Um, now, I, I will tell you that uh, in 2023, we'll have to adjust the budget to cover this, but um, I'm, I'm seeing that out ahead of us, and our other um, special machinery line item, making plans uh, so that my overall budget shouldn't have to go up. We will just move dollars around within the existing budget to cover this uh, this added expense because we'll have a whole stack of motor graders that we'll be paying for. We'll have a two-year period where um, currently that line item is like 274, 275,000. It will have to go up for a two-year period before it drops back down to that 275. And so um, uh, again, we've got a few years before that comes before us, but I am seeing that uh, out ahead and, and planning purchases uh, so that the dollars are there. Are these new machines uh, requiring extra training on the, anything new on them? Uh, the, the most significant thing is the all-wheel drive, and uh, I can tell you that it is, um, um, it, that's a different component, and they are their, how they drive the machine and how they utilize it is slightly different. Uh, some things that they um, had maybe struggled with with the existing machines, the all-wheel drive makes up for it. There's other things that the, the older, bigger machines can do that uh, this machine may take an extra pass possibly. Um, so there are some nuances to it, but it's just a matter of getting used to it. Had some of our more experienced uh, operators use this new blade a little bit, and they seem pretty happy with it. Uh, so I think it's just a like with any new technology, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve. But I think overall we're going to be satisfied with these. And and quite frankly, um, um, if by chance. The overall uh, response after we've used these for a few years, when it's time for the next round, we will take all that into consideration uh, before we make additional purchases. Questions on this? If not, we'll look for a motion to approve the purchase of three 2019 120-14 AWD motor graders from Foley. Make that motion to approve. Have a motion. Is there a second? <coughs> second. Jacobson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yeah. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, that's the only thing we have today for items of business. It takes us to staff reports. Larry? Um, 
the annex lot is going to be closed down this weekend. We are having crack sealing done. That's something we've been talking about, obviously, for months, and that is going to happen this weekend. And so we've let everyone in this building know, and we've asked them to disseminate that message to their staffs, patients, et cetera. And so we don't anticipate it will be an issue, but just know that that is happening. And then That'll, of course, be followed up in the spring with we will be in front of you recommending a full slurry seal and a painting. And once we do that with the new uh, line installed, I mean, we should be set on this lot for some time. So um, it's an exciting project because it's something that we've gotten a lot of complaints about for years. And to have it knocked out, um, I think, will be great for us. So... Um, Monday, we are going to be in front of you at a study session. We're going to have at least a couple items. One is uh, discussing the district court HVAC. Um, we've got some options on replacing that, and we want to discuss it with you before we go any further forward, because that is to do that right, it's a fairly significant expense. I mean, we could pull out what is there and just replace it but Brandon will tell you that there's some issues with doing that it's not designed particularly well but we'll have that as an option but the intention will be to discuss that we will also discuss um, pay for our corrections officers and court security we discussed that here a couple weeks ago uh, we've done a lot of research into that and we are lagging significantly behind much smaller counties with less workload and so we'll put some numbers and some data in front of you on Monday. Um, Casey Brady, our uh, communications director, she will be starting the 29th of this month. Um, so we have already, I've already got a kind of a tentative plan for how to get her rolling for now we're going to office her primary office is going to be out in the visitor center um, she will probably have a secondary office and you know at some point if we talk about a remodel in here i can envision space in here but we have other projects that we would like to get taken care of first but she'll be here on the 29th um, I think the, the plan initially is to just get her super familiar with the county's operation, what it is that we do, uh, have her get to know all of the directors and electeds, what their needs are, how she can help them. And I feel like that will give her a very solid platform to jump off of. And so uh, super excited about that. And interestingly, um, I've heard from so many people in the community about how they're excited and congratulating us on making a great hire. I mean, she, she has done very, very well over at Advent Health. So I'm excited that we were able to get her. But she will be here on the 29th which is a Friday, but we do that. Uh, it, it helps reduce the lag in benefits. So we have a 30 day wait period and it, it's an HR matter, but there's a reason we started her on a Friday, the last working day of October, as opposed to kicking it over into November. But if you have any questions about that, uh, certainly just reach out and let me know. I don't have any questions on that. Uh, I'll just, while we're talking about that, let you know the rest of you being I am the representative on the tourism board that Susan has chose to cancel all the tourism board meetings for the rest of the year. Um, she put out an email to me the other day that uh, they're going to cancel those and wait till uh, Casey's on board and figure out where they're going to go with, with that board and how that board's going to be affected or what's, what's going to happen. So. I guess she felt that there wasn't any point in continue to yeah. move forward until Casey's uh, there with them and deciding what we're actually going to do about that board. So well, just to let you know that's why I haven't had any tourism board meetings lately and won't have any till after the first year. Well, and I'll, I'll also tell you, I don't anticipate that being a, a Casey or even my decision on that advisory board. That's going to be something we discuss with you, and you will give us direction on what we do know is that the current 
system it hasn't worked like we thought it would um, in terms of sending people through the who need who are requesting TGT money sending them through the advisory board and then up to this board it just it's it's created issues that I think needlessly and so we'll talk to you about maybe a different way to do that a different way to utilize the advisory board but at the end of the day it's ultimately going to be the board of commissioners decision on how they want to utilize that so well I think we made a good effort on putting the board together I'm just not and being a part of that board I'm just not sure that board totally uh, understands what their responsibilities really are or, or aren't so we'll be able to work that out with the yeah, down the road too so she's starting November 29th no October, October 29th. 29th here next week into next week what it next Tuesday is the 29th the oh 31st. yeah I had November pulled up um, it would be the 31st I apologize so Halloween that Thursday so Thank you, Roy. Uh, David. Seems that uh, we are kind of in culvert replacement mode right now. Uh, we've had a number of them that we have um, come across that have uh, failed, and we have been in the process of uh, getting those replaced. We had one on Georgia Road south of Labette that uh, we replaced last week. Um, and then Friday, late Friday morning, we, had a, we got a call from a citizen, a, a local farmer out on uh, Stafford, saw a hole about a, I don't know, a foot diameter on the edge of the, right on the edge of the road, um, and St Stafford's a, a blacktop road, and he was concerned about it, rightfully so, called us. Uh, when we got out there, um, um, our foreman, stuck his head in the hole and could see that um, much like the Idaho road bridge situation uh, the water had gotten in around the pipe that you really couldn't see visually but it had gotten in there and boiled over time this year with all the rain that we've had and washed that material out uh, and so the only thing holding up basically the eastbound lane was the asphalt again so uh, we immediately closed that lane uh, and started pulling our folks off of other projects to get out there to um, uh, close the road down and start uh, digging into this and and replacing the pipe so uh, by early afternoon we had the had the road closed we had detours sending folks around the area uh, we dug the pipe out um, um, and the the pipe actually had a hole in it also which was contributing to the to the issue um, pulled the pipe out uh, dug the material out replaced the pipe and and compacted the the uh, the material on top of it by the time they got done with that uh, early Friday evening the, the asphalt plant was closed so we had to keep the road closed over the weekend uh, and we got it back opened uh, Tuesday late Tuesday morning so yesterday morning, we were able to open that road back up. Um, also yesterday, we ended up closing, let's see, uh, Iowa, just south of Rock Creek, had a, had a similar issue that um, pipe had failed. And so we started on that. Uh, that. That road should be reopened today. Also today, we're closing Jackson Road, just, um, just east of Idaho at the Homewood exit there is a uh, pipe that was uh, a fairly long pipe uh, that was put in whenever they built I-35 and um, um, it has finally failed in, in causing some issues so we're going to start uh, working on that today I anticipate that road being closed um, at least through the end of the week uh, it's possible that that may bleed over into early next week. Uh, there's a, a lot of dirt work associated with that one. Plus, it's a, a really long pipe. Uh, it was a special order pipe that we had to get. Total length is, is over 90 feet. Uh, the diameter of the pipe isn't, isn't um, it's only 42 inches, so it's not huge. But it 
has to travel a long ways because of the, uh, the slope of the road. And so uh, we're going to dig that out. We've talked to uh, the landowners, uh, several of the landowners. We tried to make contact with them to let them know um, what's going on. Uh, one of the landowners uh, let us know that they actually have a um, Oh, kind of a community email where they let each other know about certain things and she was going to uh, notify the neighborhood uh, to help with that uh, notification there's they can easily get out the other way they have to travel a little bit further um, but uh, there's no way around not closing the road so we're working on that um, which is a is a big deal in addition to all of that, we've managed to uh, get out and do some, some blade patching. Uh, we've been to uh, the bridge around Lane, uh, we've taken care of. Uh, also, uh, some patching on Sand Creek and Colorado north of Shawnee needed some uh, significant, significant attention as well, so we've been working on that. Uh, um, and we will continue patching as we have time. Um, and also with it being harvest, uh, there's a lot of minimum maintenance roads that we've had to get down to shape up enough so that the farmers can get in. So we've been working with, with the farming community to make sure that they have access to their crops uh, when they need to get in. And then in addition to all of that, we continue working on washouts and fixing road issues. Uh, we're aware that we've got problems all over. Um, a lot of the, um, in fact, I was out on Friday afternoon looking at some roads with um, with some folks and and many of the ditches that um, um, the citizens were current concerned about were still holding water and so uh, it, it's awfully difficult to make the final repairs to things whenever we continue to get rain and, and uh, standing water in these areas um, but we are aware of these things and are, are trying to make uh, make progress on them I just talking about that and I realize that some of our ditches like you said can't <coughs> be worked on right now and uh, I know you said our blade operators are going to training and different type of training and talking about different things but I drove a road a while back and this is not a new issue even for since I've been up here even before the rains there had been comments and complaints about the blade operators wind rowing down the sides of the road. And some do, some don't. I drive some roads that are pretty good and they're blading them like you would want them bladed. But I drove a road here a while back and the ditches weren't that bad. And the, they'd wind rowed them down both sides of the road. And I just, I think some of our blade operators are blading that way even when they have a ditch there uh, not all of them some of them are cutting it down where it goes to the di to the ditch but i don't think all of them are even when they have a ditch that they can cut the road down to where it should be they're still wind rolling and some of that and i would have to see this particular area to to know for sure but in general some of those areas where they where they have the double wind rows are areas that um they have those areas are have been real soft on the edges and so they are trying to dig down a little bit to get to drier land drier ground and stockpiling that that material in windrows so that it will dry out so that they can reuse it uh, that is that is some of it and again without seeing specifically the areas that you're talking about it i i don't know for sure um, in general, the most important thing with the roads is the crown. Um, without, without, a, uh, without crown in the road, you're going to get, um, uh, you know, that's where your massive potholes develop on roads where there's not enough crown. And so when they, a lot of times when they dig down a little bit, it's in an effort to make sure there's crown. That's not, um, that's not in every case. Um, and, and we are working to correct uh, some of these deficiencies in our roads. They didn't happen overnight, and they're not going to be fixed overnight. But we are spending more time with the blade operators. Uh, we continue to meet. Uh, it's been a little while yet. I need to uh, get back together with them. 
but we are talking about these things and, and we'll be um, um, adjusting things as, as we go here. It, it's not a, um, I, 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 the only way I can really describe it is that uh, it may appear that we're doing business as usual. That's not really the case. One of the things, Commissioner Howard, that I've heard a couple of you say, and I've heard from a lot of people, and I think I've observed it myself, I don't think all of our blade operators blade the same way, and that's problematic to me. And We're going to change that if I have to do it myself. We have got to establish a way that we blade roads in this county, and so I'm obviously not qualified to establish what way that is, but so many of our problems come from the fact that in one district, roads will look a certain way, different district, and I, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't think it has to be that way. I think we just need to get our guys the management and the training on that that they need, and so that's an area that I'm going to be working on with David to ensure that it. Um, you know, if there is, if we do have blade operators that are doing it in an ideal way or a close to an ideal way, then we'll figure out a way to train our other ones so that they're doing it that same way um, because we know they're not all performing the same way at this point. So. And I think it's, it's definitely improving with the training and so forth. I think one of the issues we had in years past, in my opinion, is we really didn't have, per se, a foreman that was totally over the blade operators in the roads to go out and basically say, this isn't acceptable, this is the way you need to do it. And we really haven't had that. I think for a long time, our blade operators have just been totally out there on their own, doing their thing. And, and I think that now that you're getting some training and what you're talking about, I think uh, yeah. we get the right one or the right person that knows what they're to do and how to do it and uh, works with the ones that aren't getting it that way and get it where they're doing it too. I think it's, it's going to take time. I understand that, but, but I think that uh, that's pretty much it because you'll drive some of our roads and they're pretty good and you'll drive other roads that the ditches aren't really that much worse than the other roads, but they're not anywhere close to where another blade operator may be doing it. So uh, a couple of additional things. Um, one, we are providing more support to the, to the blade operators, um, and I have things in the works to provide even more support to them. Uh, the other thing I will say is that uh, you, you know, things may appear to be the same mile after mile as far as conditions, but every mile of road has different, different circumstances and different conditions that warrant uh, certain practices. Uh, that's not to say that, you know, we don't have a, um, a, a lot of room for improvement because there are lots of things that we can improve on. But the fact is uh, all of our roads do have different circumstances. Farming practices are different today than they, they have been. Uh, you get more, more runoff um, uh, quicker because of the uh, no-till practices. Uh, we have folks that are terracing their, their terraces right to our, our little ditches. Uh, so we have issues that um, um, make the job of the blade operator the most difficult job that we have in this county. And so uh, I recognize that and, and we are working to support them um, by providing them you know, good equipment and, and solid training and um, support and leadership and giving them somebody to uh, to visit with and and to review the the road situations that they that they encounter setting priorities all of those things are part of what we are doing today that will continue and we will continue to continue to expand that um, and and it is my intention to have um, um, you know some some guidelines policies if you will in place uh, regarding blading but this whole year uh, and I can't speak to what's happened in the past years but this whole year all we've done is uh, all we've been able to do is triage on our roads uh, we've been 
you know, I, I, you, you all know the historic water and, and floods and snow and ice and all of those things that we faced this year set us back uh, on our roads years. Um, um, and we are starting to, starting to make a little progress on the condition of the driving surface. Um, um, the, the, there's no doubt that the driving surfaces are in much better shape than, than they were uh, two weeks ago or a month ago or six weeks ago. Um, now, are they all perfect? Nope, not by a long shot, but they are in much better condition and folks are able to travel safely on the vast majority of our roads. And we are working to make sure that all the roads are, uh, um, uh, folks are able to safely travel down. The next the next challenge is working on those, uh, you know, on the on the edges. Um, it's still too wet in a lot of cases to do any significant ditch work. Um, uh, in the areas that it, it is dry enough, we are starting to, to get into the ditches um, um, and starting to retrieve uh, some of the rock that's <laughs> washed away multiple times this year. It's a slow process simply because of the scope of the, the job that we've got ahead of us. Hopefully the ditches, it sounds like you're talking about using a motor grader because of the moisture, that's why we can't get to it. That's, that's, that's part of it, uh, but we also, you know, we, we've only, we've got a skid loader, a couple of backhoes and a track hoe. Um, so, you know, it may appear that we haven't made much of a dent, but uh, we are getting in there. We've had, uh, I can't tell you how many times we've had a, a motor grader stuck this year because of them trying to get into the, into the ditches and do this work. Yeah, it, it, Let's say is generally do we use motor grader? We dip them out with the hoe? Uh, a little bit of both. It depends on the circumstances. You mentioned written the machine mm -hmm. to maybe where we can make more progress on that. We haven't done that yet, um, but those are things that, that we're looking at. Um, quite frankly, it's a lot of our attention and resources have been diverted to taking care of these culverts that have failed. Um, trying to prioritize and, and do the things that, that need to be done right now, trying to do those right now. So. Assuming you don't find any more culverts, would you get, say you're close to making a switch from road surface over to edge as far as where you start allocating services? Possibly. I, 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 it's, it's maybe in certain areas we can do that. Um, but as far as a uh, all out um, full scale attack on, on all of our ditches, that's It, it, it takes, um, we have nine blade districts, each one of them have, have these issues, and it's not necessarily a one-man job to do these, these ditching projects. And so it is partly, at least, a, a resource issue, making sure that we've got the resources dedicated to be able to do these things. You know, the, some of the areas uh, that we've tried to do uh, just with the blades, they, they look awful because they were not able to um, uh, fully complete the job. I can come back with additional information in the coming days to um, provide a little more uh, information to you if you'd like. Takes this commissioner comments and board reports. Uh, the only thing I might mention to you, y'all got the letter on the on the wind farm deal. I went to a deal in Oklahoma a couple of months ago, Southwest States, and their main one of the main topics down there was educating the public on wind generators and uh, the legal aspects and so forth. And so I came back, and I'm also a Farm Bureau member, and, and I been talking with the Farm Bureau for quite a while if they would be interested in sponsoring something that we we need something to educate the public and ourselves before the fact not after the fact not after <coughs> they start to move in and then start talking about it so uh, after about two months they decided to put this together and we're going to have it out to 
Neosho County, and I think it'll be uh, very informational to the public and us both to hear the legal aspects about it, not just what they do and how they do it, but actually hear uh, the legal aspects behind it, uh, what they're responsible for and what we need to look for when we're making the decision. Uh, that's all I got. And I, I know you mentioned uh, uh, the track hole, and I know they they did uh, Texas and that section in there and Jackson Road and Vermont where it cleaned them, and they all did it with a, with a back hole, and I don't think any of them would have been accomplished with a motor grader. I mean, yeah, a lot of them can, but those just wouldn't happen. So that's all I got. No, I think most of us were, or all of us were at the county city uh, USD 290 uh, dinner on Wednesday luncheon. Uh, on Thursday, several of us were also at the planning commission uh, where they were discussing the uh, sustainable energy um, and getting more information in the and public comment and I think that was the first time we had public comment on it and, and got to hear that on Friday um, there was a chamber coffee for revitalized creation and then I did get to spend a couple hours with David and one of my constituents on Friday afternoon driving roads um, and it is and just being able to listen to David and really Finding out, you know, why they're doing what they're doing and, and what their plan is, and, and it really was. It really was good, and if you really have um, questions on it, he would be glad to do that. It, it, there was a couple, he, most of the areas he already knew about. There were a couple of uh, areas that he added to his list, his long list of areas that need to be, but anyway, it was good to go out and do that. And then I can't imagine that we only had this much uh, uh, business today considering that there was a tornado that hit Ottawa yesterday um, but thank goodness it was only an exercise it, they're in the middle of a three-day exercise and and not only is it people from Franklin County but there are people from counties all over that have come uh, to be a part of this exercise and it, it really is a good hopefully it's kind of like uh, changing a tire or CPR right you, you, you hopefully you, you know you want to know how to do it but hopefully you never have to and we hope that we never have to, um, but it is good to kind of know what's going on. So that's it. I went to the planning commission last Thursday night and renewable energy was the main focus of most of the people there. And it's very difficult to make, make rules on solar or wind that fits, fits everybody. Uh, they had a company there that does uh, a small scale uh, wind farm or solar farms there and uh, Joe spoke about his uh, there about his uh, personal solar uh, setup and it's hard to, it's really hard to make make rules that uh, apply to the big wind farms the small wind farms and and uh, and the, Planning Commission struggle with that, and uh, we had a presentation from a, a company that is leasing property for uh, solar solar energy production. And uh, Planning Commission didn't come to any conclusion, but they, they tabled it and needed to look into it further because it's uh, pretty difficult to make rules for commercial commercial collection of natural energies and how you distribute them. And, and, uh, that's, that's basically what I got out of, out of that uh, well, meeting. It's hard one, to one thing is, it's like, a, I guess one thing in Franklin County's favor is there's a lot of counties in the area and throughout the state have already went through this. So there's a lot of information out there that uh, we'll be able to, to use from their experiences and what they've went through. It's not like we're the, the first one trying this, so we're gonna be the one that's experiment with the different ways to handle it. We ought to be able to get a lot of information from the other places that's, that's been through this before and learn from them, I hope so. Uh, I also went to the uh, luncheon, and that's all I've been to uh, since the last meeting. We do have a study session scheduled for next Monday, commission meeting next Wednesday. Um, yeah, 
some commission meetings coming up we'll talk about later. I think the November the 13th is that when we're going to several, at least three or four of us going to be at the, four of us going to be at the. Uh, AC. That day. So we'll cancel <laughs> then. We'll talk about that next uh, on the 30th when we get a little closer to that. Um, looking forward to seeing Paul on the agenda before too long to give us an update on what he's got going since he's got in there. So anytime you want to get on the agenda and fill us in, we'll be glad to have you. So if nothing else, we'd look for a motion to adjourn. So move. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I had one eye. Looks aye. like we're going to be here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All opposed? <laughs> Or adjourn. <laughs>